Thank you so much. Let us pray. First of all, we're just so grateful to be here. This is uh, history in the making, and we all love Marin City. And we feel so blessed to be part of this. And we want to thank Felicia for all that she's put into making this celebration, the 80, 80th birthday of Marin City, a reality. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you for your mercy. We thank you, oh, oh God, that you have been with us all through the years. When we think about how far you have brought us, the songwriters say we've come this far by faith, leaning on you, God. We thank you that you have been our leaning post. We thank you, oh God, that you have brought us through so many dangers, toils, and snares. And we are here to celebrate and to say thank you and praise your holy name. Thank you for all the friends that we have in Marin County. This crew that's doing this today, we ask a special blessing for them. We thank you for Felicia who works night and day trying to put all this together. And we ask you to keep us together in love, help us to love one another, to look beyond each other's faults and see the need and the connection. We ask you to let this program be a legacy that will be passed down from years to come. We love you so much. We honor you. We praise you. And we ask you to keep us in your perfect peace. Thank you, and we praise your holy name. Amen. 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 People love one another in Marin City. People love one another in Marin City. People love one another. so much for being a part of this uh, Marin City legacy. It's been such an honor for you all to take the time out to share your stories. And we look forward to the more people knowing more and more about the history of Marin City. Thank you for being here. I'd like for you to introduce yourself, give your name, your age, and where you were born. And then when did you move to California? And how old were you and what brought you here? My name is Benny Ford, actually Benny Johnson um, is my name, will always be my name. I was born and raised in Marin County. Um, I was born at Ross Hospital in Kenfield, so I was already here. My parents came in the 40s uh, to Marin City, and um, 
I'm 72 years old <laughs> or young, <laughs> and I um, one of the the most fond memories I have of growing up in Marin City was the fact that everybody was so close. Everybody knew everybody. Everybody kind of took care of everybody. Um, if ever you were doing anything you shouldn't be doing, you not only got in trouble with your parents, but you got in trouble with whoever caught you doing whatever you were doing. So it was just like a real uh, community. And I love the fact that um, everybody felt so free. We didn't have as much to deal with as far as you know, drugs and, and all that kind of stuff. We were kind of sheltered in Marin City because it was just basically us. Um, but I love the fact that everybody seemed like they were family. And that's the best part, other than certain holidays like Halloween. That was my favorite Halloween, I mean holiday, because I got to stay up late during the week. <laughs> but anyway, that was it for me. Okay, thank you. Marie, so your name and age, where you were born, when did you move to California? How old are you and how old were you and what brought you here? Okay, um, <clears throat> my name is Mary Marie Gaines, but I go by Marie Gaines. Um, I was born in uh, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, in a little town called Baker, Louisiana. And uh, I'm 73. And I came to um, Marin City when I was 18, so I was supposed to be graduating, but um, I couldn't So because my mother had came to, uh, she was a registered nurse, and she came to take care of my aunt, who had sugar diabetes and lost her legs. And so she left, all, uh, she left her eight kids in Louisiana. And when I came, the picture outside with my uncle, Bro Mitchell, that car is what my four siblings came in with Bro Mitchell and my grandfather. Mm -hmm. And so the oldest four came with him. And uh, so, I mean, I was just like tearful when I came. And so, um, and then I came on the Greyhound with the younger kids. And I was uh, 18. And uh, we, when, I, when we came, we was um, in the pole homes. My uncle, James Spears. So we stayed there with him until we got an uh, apartment down in the flats. Um, um, what was it? 213, when Miss Charles and Lily is there. So we was at 213 Drake Avenue. And um, so, and my fondest memories of Marin City was uh, all of the, the togetherness of the people. And um, since I was from Louisiana, I wasn't used to going to school with other people, just blacks. And so that was a culture shock to me. So, but otherwise, if got over it, and we um, we just had a marvelous time in Marin City. And my uncle, uh, my grandfather, Reverend James Miller, he was the one who came, um, migrated people from uh, Louisiana and all parts of the world. They came to Marin City and uh, got us here. Okay, great. Thank you. <laughs> okay, my name is Essie Hardy. Um, I came to Marin City in 1956. Uh, I think I was 20 years old when I came to Marin City. Um, I had a lot of relatives living in Marin City, and I had to get out of a situation. Uh, I was born in Louisiana. I was born in New Orleans, Louisiana, and uh, one of my relatives came, and she said, if you need somewhere to go, you can come to Marin City and live with me. So. That's what I did. I came to Marin City. It, it was different because those houses were sitting up on the hills. I had never seen that before, you know, and you had to walk up the hills to get to these houses. But, you know, I've, I've really enjoyed being in Marin City. Uh, when I first came here, I was doing domestic work. Um, then I went to college, and I got a degree to work with children, so I worked as a preschool teacher for 37 years. So uh, Marin City is a good place. I could let my children play outside. And, you know, I know if somebody saw them doing something, they was going to come tell me or I could go tell them about their children. Everybody just seemed to look out for each other's children. 
and it was wonderful. Being it's been wonderful being in Marin City. Great, thank you. Hi, hi. My name is Lillian A. Bear, and uh, I came to Marin City in 1953. I was born in Louisiana in a little town called Burley, Louisiana. <laughs> Very small place. And the reason I came out here is because my husband had came out before looking for work. Once he found work, then he sent for me. And Verna Bynum and I <coughs> came together on the train, uh, which was quite an experience because it had a lot of soldiers on that train. <laughs> and I was a little shy at that time. I was 21 years old, and after I, we came in to, into San Francisco, and as we were crossing the Golden Gate Bridge, that was a disappointment for me, because I thought the Golden Gate Bridge would be a different color. At least I thought it would be like a, a, a new penny. Yeah. <laughs> but it was ugly to me, and it was foggy the day that we came into Marin City. Once I got into Marin City, I said, this is where I'm going? <laughs> I had never seen in buildings like that in my life, those long buildings uh, where the soldiers had lived, you know, and then once I got inside, I realized, hey, my neighbor could even hear me talking. We were so close, you could knock on the wall and hear each other talking. So that was uh, the disappointment for me when I got into Marin City. And as far as work for me, I did domestic work when I first came. But then after that, I uh, got a job at the bank, and I worked at, uh, in banking for 20 years, and that's where I retired. That's Thank good. you. Yeah, <laughs> especially about the housing. <laughs> Hi, my name is Carl Diedrich. I was uh, born and raised in Marin City, born in 1947, Ross Hospital. Watch that change, too. That's a... Uh, a, uh, an apartment building is there now. But um, just living in Marin City, uh, Marin City has always been a unique thing. And the thing that was really special to me is that there was a diversity of people that lived here. There's people from China, from the Philippines, there was Native Americans, there was people from Europe. And people were close. They used to leave the doors unlocked. And uh, you didn't have to lock the door. I remember uh, my mother and then was going to Louisiana because some family had passed away, and, or the friends of hers had. And so we collected the milk and kept it in the house until they came back. And people would borrow a cup of sugar or pet milk or things like that. It was a closeness. It was a closeness, and I, I, I long for that now. I wish sometimes that we could get that kind of camaraderie back because race and gender did not separate us like it does now. You know, and it's just a, it's a joy, waiting for a change to happen. But the beauty of that will always be a part of me and always be a part of what I do. And what I remember, I, I, um, this is a moment of talking about this thing, some feelings come up for me. And I won't, used to try to hide them, but I won't do that. Let them live, because that's the truth about me and the truth about a lot of the people in this room, because I know them and knew all those families. And they live in my heart. We've lost a lot of people along the way. But we're still here, and we're here for a purpose. And it's just a joy to be here, and I'm just so thankful for this moment, this time, with everybody that's in this room, this sharing, something that we really need to do and keep alive. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Hi, I'm Jackie Fowler Dietrich. <laughs> I was born and raised in Marin City at Ross Hospital. Uh, I'm 75 years old. Went to Marin City uh, School. 
And my fondest memory of being in Marin City was the donut truck. <laughs> used to come into Marin City, a nickel. We used to chase after the donut truck to get the donuts. And we, um, our family lived in the flats, A, B, B4. And then we moved from B4 up to 180. And then we, after we lived up to 180, we moved way on top of the hill to 800. And then they started tearing down the houses in Marin City. So we went, moved down to 587 down. And then we moved back into the flats was A18. I went to Richardson Bay um, School and graduated from Tam High School. And uh, there was floods all the time in Marin City. Flood, when it rained, we flood. We had to wear boots to walk to Richardson Bay School sometime. So that was my fondest memory of uh, being in Marin City and still, and still living in Marin City. And now I live at 149, Buckaloo. <laughs> Hello, my name is Florence Williams. Uh, and they still call me a newcomer. You know, you have to be here 100 years before you, <laughs> at least. But, um, my connection, first I was born and raised in Mansfield, Louisiana. Northern Louisiana, Miss Bear, Not Southern Louisiana. You know, it's a difference. We cook gumbo not the same way. Yeah. So, um, I w in Mansfield, it was a s small town similar to Marin City. So, but my, my, my experience was that when I first came, I came to San Francisco because I came uh, of 21 to go to UC Berkeley uh, to get college education, to complete a college education. And I had relatives, uncles living in the city and three aunts living in Marin City. And so I was back and forth, Marin City and, and um, San Francisco. And I would tell my aunt in which the house that I live in right now, I, told, I would tell her, I want to live here one day. And she says, oh, I'm not going anywhere. But it was an uh, unfortunate thing that happened. She and her husband went to Hawaii for a vacation. And he, um, he, he got sick with meningitis and died. And she could not stand to live in this house anymore. So she called me from the city and said, come and stay here. I've got to get out of here. I've got, because I'm going crazy. She even had a heart attack at his service. She was, they were so in love. She was 16. She never, this was her first love and only love. And guess what her name was? Love. Mm. And so that so um, I I she said come and move stay in this house I've got to get out and so she moved out for a minute and and she says I'm not coming back because he was a gardener and he had planted all these trees and all of that in the yard and this she just couldn't take that and so um, what. I, my, my experience with Marin City is that it was similar to my hometown. I love the people. I love how friendly and, and how they just accepted me as family right away. You know, and um, also what I like about Marin City is it's spiritual. It's um, there, not just the churches, but the people uh, are spiritual people. They, they, they have the faith that we have and we believe in. I remember that the preachers got together and were roped together and just literally a rope roped them all together. It was symbolic of what the community stands for. Um, I have a lot more to say. It was just, it's just a wonderful place to live. I, I don't think it's anywhere else in the world that I would rather be. I know my sons always say, Mom, I'm going to move you something. I said, no, you, I don't want to go. So it, it's, it is a special place. Thank you. 
Okay. Good afternoon. My name is Gloria Porter. I was born and raised in Honduras, Central America. And I came to Marin City in the early 60s, I was born 60, 61. And when I first came in, and like Florence and Xavier, that night I came in on the plane and saw Mr. Dick God, rest his soul, and Dolores Dickens. They picked me up from the airport and I said, oh, everything, they look beautiful, all of these lights. Next morning when I got up and I look outside, I say, oh no. <laughs> I said, y'all, when I went to sleep, did y'all brought me here while I was sleeping? <laughs> because this don't look what I seen last night. It don't look the same. So I said, okay. So I went to the, with Dolores to her job. Mr. Dick took us. Went into Mill Valley. When we get so far, and he had to get on the side to make a car pass. I said, oh my God. The house you had to go down, like if you're going down into the ditch to get to the house. And I'm saying, oh no. So I came here for, as a nanny. I came working. And I was going to live in um, Kent Woodland. And the lady picked me up, and she took me there, the Owens. And she get on the side of the road and she said, you see the top of that house there? That's where we live. I said, ma'am, let me tell you something. <laughs> you could turn your car around and take me straight to the airport and put me back on the plane. I said, because I don't live in bushes. Because <laughs> to me, this is bush. And she said, well, the kids are looking forward to see you. <clears throat> I said, oh, okay. <laughs> so I went along with her. When we got off of the road, you got to go down like a hill, then straighten up back. <laughs> <laughs> this not for me. <laughs> I said, okay. So Sammy was Lloyd, Leslie, and Sammy. Sammy was the baby. And when he came out, he came and he just put his little arms around my legs. And I said, Oh, no, you don't supposed to do this because I don't want to stay here. <laughs> but anyway, we went on. I said, okay, I'm going to spend the night here. But every Thursday, I go into Marin City. And I just used to love the, the warmness because in my home in, in Taylor, it, we all warm. We all take care of each other children. We take, if you sick or you need a piece of bread, I remember my mom, we had a cinquito bread. And the neighbor asked if she could, if she had any bread that she could give her little kids. My mom take that little bread and she cut a couple of slices for me and my sister. And she <coughs> sent the rest with a little girl for her mother to feed her kids. So that's the way I grew up in love, tranquility, kindness. And it, that's what I felt when I first came to Marin City. But I still say, certain areas is bush for me. <laughs> <laughs> we could sit in our living room and look out and see the Atlantic Ocean. So I, to me, it's bush. But I love it. I will not. <clears throat> exchange it, I travel a little, but I will not exchange Marin City for none of the big cities mm -hmm. because that mm -hmm. is love there in Marin mm -hmm. City. Mm -hmm. Thank That's you beautiful. very much. That's beautiful. Okay. Thank you. Hi, my name is Connie Hector. My connection to Marin City is through my in laws. I married into a wonderful family that migrated out here during the early 40s because of the World War II and to work at the Marin shipyard. And I have just fallen in love with the legacy, the history of Marin City because it does remind me of my childhood and growing up. I'm from Houston, Texas. Uh, I'm 68 years old. And I grew up on a dead-end street in Houston, Texas 
that we were all related and we were all kin and the warmth and the love was there. And since coming to becoming acquainted with Felicia and uh, all the work that she has done in bringing Marin City to the forefront, I just fell in love with it. And my mother-in-law, uh, Ali Hector, was a uh, journeyman, uh, uh, what do you call him? Welder. Welder, Welder. Uh, at, at the shipyard. And uh, the history of, of Marin City has just been overwhelmingly warm and inviting. And even just now listening to some everyone speak, Ms. Florence, we got to talk afterwards. My mother is from Mansfield, Louisiana. Uh -oh. So see how, see how the connection is, is, I mean, she and I, before we finish, we are probably related to each other. <laughs> but that is what Marin City has meant to me. Great. I wish to say welcome to me, to California from Louisiana. There were 12 children. Your name. 12 children that decided to make life better for themselves. California has afforded this to my family. I am very thankful that Felicia is bringing this history back. So greetings to everyone. My name is Willie M. Jefferson. I am the niece of John Polk, who was in military service that came this way for a better life and did not want to be in a phone. And his other brothers and sisters included Ollie, which is the Hector, married Willie Hector, who decided he needed to make a better home coming over a nickel of pay increase. As a result of their desire for a better life for their children, with living condition and education condition, they invited their sister Helen to come. And as a result of Helen coming, her husband McKinley came, and they were blessed to find Marin City. As a greeting to our family, they were also blessed to encourage their brothers and sisters that came here. So we had Ella to come, we had Jesse to come, and also this past weekend we celebrated George's 90th birthday. And so we do have a history with California and Louisiana. At the age of 13, Willie Jefferson came to California following her sister who wanted to come to San Francisco State. She was a graduate of the high school, but did not afford her the opportunities that she really wanted. Her name is Frankie M. Jefferson. I like to talk, but I need you to understand, six children stayed in Louisiana, six children came to California, and we were blessed with the travel to and from. So the experiences that the children shared in California, as well as the adventures we shared in Louisiana, I need for you to know, I come from now, the little town of Avery Island in Iberia Parish, where they make Tabasco, all from New Orleans, Louisiana, and we still are adventuring. Nothing is better than home as Marin City is to me. So the next question, a few of you touched on it in, when you spoke earlier. I, will, I do want to ask the ones that didn't speak because I want to ask a question like, what type of work did you do? And the ones who already mentioned it, you don't have to do that. And then I'll go around, I have another question, because how are we on time? Okay. Thank okay. you, Felicia. Um, I spent 35 years teaching high school in San Francisco. I was a high school teacher. So ask me, am I prepared for the war zone? Yes. No, it was, a, it was my calling. And I was so blessed to be able to, uh, to uh, share my life with the young people. And um, I, I, um, I say it's my calling because 
it was uh, just such a pleasure. And I got so much joy out of doing that. And so education is something that I still do. I mean, it's just a part of me. So my, my career has been teaching high school, 30-something okay. years. You, the work, did you, did you mention your work? No, I didn't. No, okay. Uh, when I graduated from um, high school, Tam, in 1966, my first job was Social Security, and then I went from Social Security to Chevron, and then from Chevron I came to Co-op Market, and then Co-op went out of business, and then I uh, went to Petrini's, and then Molly Stone's. So when I retired, I retired from Molly Stone's after 32 years of retail. Mm -hmm. And um, that's where I pretty much okay. my working. Thank you. Yeah, after, um, after I graduated from uh, Tamapias High School, I got drafted in the Army. So I went to Vietnam for a year, came back, got for a short time in a vocal group, and then I came back to Marin City from leaving Los Angeles and uh, I worked in housekeeping at Kaiser Hospital in Terra Linda for about eight years, seven years. And then I went to work for BART in the maintenance department and I retired at BART. I did 31 years there and that was, a, that was another family. I found some of the same things at that job that I found in Marin City. And it, it's just some great people and a great, it was a family oriented and I we still stay in touch with each other now and I've been retired now for about 11 and a half years and it's just been a beautiful thing I'm I'm finding family everywhere and it's just a beautiful thing for sure okay. and I know you touched on it earlier but um, where what bank did you work Bank of America and what did you do at Bank of America well I was a supervisor you moved up supervisor right away? Time you no, oh, okay. I, sta I started off at, as a, a keyboard uh, operator. Okay. Well, first of all, I did all the checks, and you had to do them one by one. That machine go clucking, clucking. <laughs> <laughs> and you had to balance all of those checks at the end of the day. So that was horrible. But I moved up. I moved on up. And I think I forgot to say that I'm 92 years old. Wow, beautiful. Yeah. I think I really told. Yeah, um, <laughs> you said you worked in, tell me the name of the child care. I worked in Marin City. I started uh, at, at the college, and I worked there. Then I was moved down to Marin City, and I worked at Marin City for 30-some years. Yeah. Well, I was blessed with uh, being raised by my grandmother in Louisiana and two grandfathers that was ministers. My mother's father, Reverend James Miller, uh, here in California, and in Louisiana, Reverend Wallace Williams. So we was very religious, and my grandmother used to always say, you never know what the Lord is going to do or take away from you. So never stop learning. So if an opportunity come, take it. You want to be a, uh, you, don't, you don't know if you want to be a truck driver. If the opportunity come, learn it. You want to work at the bank, learn it. And so I've done a, a variety of jobs. I did drive big rigs, uh, worked at the bank. Then I did uh, start a janitorial business. I graduated from TAM in '66 when I when I came and uh, started the janitorial. And then I um, started taking classes with uh, with trying to start a business. But then the multi service center, I started working there and my janitorial. So then I started working with seniors. And that was my passion. So I stayed there for 30 years, and just the wisdom that I got from the seniors, and I'm still with them today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I've been retired for like five years, but that, that was the joy and the wisdom that I got from the seniors. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just if 
if I could say anything to uh, young kids, would be never pass up an opportunity to learn a new new venture. Never know when you might need it. <laughs> As I was sitting here, I was trying to think, um, when did I start? Actually, I, my first job, I worked in Marin City. Marin City had these programs. Um, I was still in high school. I was a senior. And so I ended up working at one of the ELC programs as a secretary. You know, when you're a kid, you don't know what you want to do. And uh, sometimes you don't have the opportunity to do what you think you might want to do. But anyway, that was my start there. So I said, I don't want to do that, you know. And I ended up, after I graduated from high school, I was a, a teenage mother. I got married when I was 16. And um, so I went straight from high school straight to work just any job that I could take. I didn't really have time to figure out what I wanted to do. So my first job, um, I worked in San Francisco at a investment company. And I started out as a file clerk. So within that company, I worked a few years, and then I moved up into like phases of accounting. And from that job, <clears throat> I ended up going to companies like I've worked for several different companies, always working in bookkeeping or accounting. So I worked for Bechtel Corporation almost 10 years and mm -hmm. was laid off and then came back to Marin County to work. Totally different atmosphere. Uh, with smaller businesses, but I still worked in accounting. Um, and throughout my entire life, I pretty much figured out that if anything ever happened, I would stay in accounting because everybody needed that, you know, and I had to depend on myself to survive. So I'll just say the last place that I worked, I, I worked at um, the city of Mill Valley, and before the city of Mill Valley, I had tried to... I opened a business for myself called, called Benny's Bookkeeping, and I tried to work for myself because I said, I'm, I'm tired of working for other people. <laughs> and so I thought I could work for myself, but that didn't work because it, it just was not enough money. So I just, <clears throat> I just asked God to give me a last job that would support me, have benefits, and I wouldn't have to work anymore. So in 2017, I retired from uh, the city of Mill Valley, and, um, and that was it. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, well, if you have a mic. Uh, I am a Louisiana graduate. <laughs> However, when I finished Grambling State University, my first job opportunity was offered to me in Vista, California. As of today, I don't know where Vista is because on the bus that I used to travel to California, I came straight to San Francisco. Wasn't lost, but decided that my home was Louisiana, still is Louisiana. However, when I retired in 2012, my first vacation was coming back to California. And so now I can say to you, I've taken professional courses at San Francisco State, Berkeley, et cetera, to further my education, ending the highest level as a specialist in education, served as an administrator for 40 plus two years, because my first two years, my father <coughs> allowed me to take a vacation from education, and you never can take a vacation from education. Uh, my dream was to join the singers. And so I am proud to say that, however, with the travel of my family here, one of my elder cousins, Willie Hector Jr., ended up playing for the Los Angeles Rams and retired from them and other uh, professional footballs. We are basically an educated family, from baby to the eldest. Okay, I retired after 28 years in law enforcement in San Francisco. Um, part of 
Another reason why I love Marin City and my connection to Marin City is Felicia's background. We have that in common. So that makes also the connection to Marin City a wonderful experience for me. Thank you. Well, after I stop, um, leave the family, the Olin family in, in Kent Woodland, I started to do their work. And I was still living in Marin City. I moved out, I live in Marin City, me and Dolores Dickens. And after that, I went to work for the Tamapais Retirement Home. And I worked at the Tamapai's retirement home for 31 years, three months, and a week. <laughs> <laughs> and I retire. <laughs> and I retire from them with those ladies and gentlemen there. They're all older. They was all older people. And I treat them like how I would treat my mother mm -hmm. or my grandmother or my aunt or some part of my family. We have cried together. We have laughed together, we ate together, we drink together. We have done a little bit of everything. And then one year they said, okay, I went to, um, they asked me at the Sequoia to come and they was having a program and they wanted me to do the opening prayer and the ending prayer of there from the Tamapais retirement home. And I did it and I will go back again to the Tam but I need all of those older people that is gone to be there because the, the younger one them, no, it don't work. But I thank God for every bit of it and all that my life is and all that it will be. I thank God for it because if it wasn't through the Lord, I would not be able to be sitting here and speak to you all. But by his mercy and grace, that's what gave me the strength and continue give me the strength to do what I daily love to do, is to be with people and be kind to others. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, question, and this is, I will go around. Um, what businesses do you remember in growing up in uh, living in Marin City? Oh. Um, what businesses? I remember the cleaners. Do you know who was? And and if you do know who is it owned by? Yeah. Uh oh. I if you don't, <laughs> if you know, if not, yeah, just I don't remember right now names. I'm trying to get. Um, the reason I'm asking is because they have one more book that's coming out and is in final editing and it's a, a compilation of from 1942 to 2022. But there's some areas that's missing about the businesses because I wasn't here. So I do know some of the names, but I want to try to get as many names that people may remember. And if you don't even know the name, uh, who owned it, even if you say a cleaners, a cab, yeah. you know, gas station. Yeah. The only owner that I knew of was uh, of the uh, grocery store, the Haydens. Okay. Um, but I do remember some of the other businesses, um, the gas station, um, there was a guy, we used to, his name was Joe, he was a cab driver. Okay. Um, and I remember there was a candy store, because I think my mom worked there for a while. And um, let's see, what else do I remember in particular? Oh, okay, there, was, there was a building for hairdressers okay. uh, in Marin City, and that's about all that okay. I remember. So he could say we got 10 minutes in, you know. Because I, I think there's probably one last question that I'd like everybody, um, what advice you would give younger generation? Yeah, after we do the business, it's then Carl is going to close us out with a song. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. The Williams had the cleaning store. The, yeah, the Williams owned the cleaning uh, business there. Um, goodness, we had a drugstore. When I first came there, uh, we had a supermarket when I first came to Marin City. Yeah. And some of the things that she named, we had there. The so. supermarket was like, I had read um, Bryce Market, Bryce, Bryce Brothers, Brothers, Brothers supermarket. and Waldo. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then uh -huh. Haynes. Okay. Okay. 
All mentioned. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, again, there was uh, Williams uh, Cleaners, mm -hmm. and there was a guy on the hill, they called him Big George. He used to come up on the hill when we lived in 754, and he was a cleaner, cleaner's man. And then um, Buster Grayson had the gas station, and Mr. Page, the Page family had yeah. the gas station. All right, I got And that. then Susie had a, that, that was the, the hamburger stand. The flea market. Okay. Oh wow! Slide. There was a. There was. A, he was from. He was from Europe. Slide. The slide store was a small store. And what he used to work. Carl Slide. It was called uh, Slides Market. I think it was. Okay. It was right down the street from. Yeah, the little store. That's what we call the little store. It's right down the street from the church, from where uh, Cornerstone is right now, mm -hmm. sitting right where the police department was. That's where the store sat. Mm -hmm. Oh my! I. In the beauty salon, because Will. Tootsie and Wilma. Mm -hmm. Wilma Hall had a uh, beauty okay. shop there in Tootsie. Yeah. And, the candy store. and early, early, early Cobb, or no, early Brown had the barbershop. Mm -hmm. Okay. Early Brown. I remember these names going to come back. Uh, <laughs> that's we had what I remember. 10 minutes. Okay. <laughs> I might be able to recover them all. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to think about it later and say, Felicia, call me up. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'll be up too. <laughs> and, and in the little store, the meat guy who ran the meat department, oh, yeah. uh, Hardy, 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 Hardy Westmore, Westmore. Oh, okay. ran the uh, meat, meat, uh, right. and the child care center, Miss Wilson, Will Williams, she ran the child care okay, right. center, she ran that. Yeah. Okay. And uh, the clinic, uh, mm -hmm. what's her name? Uh, she ran the clinic. When they got our shots and all that stuff in there. That nurse. Um, What's her name? The nurse. Uh, I, can, uh, I, can, I can't I, think of her I name. Know. Uh, uh, oh, oh, oh. I know. Gonna... <laughs> uh, yeah. I know who you're talking. So. Miss Taylor. And the barber. And Miss Taylor. Uh, Ms. Taylor. Okay. And the in the yeah. in the barber shop, Early Brown and all yeah. them had the barber shop and. Okay. That's uh. Okay. That's what I remember. I would say ditto, and some of these businesses were not there when I came and but the one that the store that I remember the most is the Hayden's market I would go in there all the time okay. yeah it's called Insurance. Mm -hmm. oh okay and, and then Mr. Quiet too then oh, yeah. James Quiet show me she went Miss Hodges she had a real estate okay real estate. okay Anybody? Uh, Who ran the cafeteria? Oh, uh, can you use the mic? Oh, mm. thank you. Sorry. And the cafeteria, uh, there was a, a black owner that Spigna. had the, had the cafeteria. Spigna. His last name was Spigna. Really? Spigna. Okay. Yeah. yeah. What about Leroy? Leroy Spigna. Leroy. Leroy Spigna. Yeah. Someone that was always talking about the, the Howard, Mr. Howard. Oh, Mr. Howard. Truck. Oh, yeah. What, he had what did he rolling, sell? He had the rolling truck, the blue truck. Okay. Yeah. He sold everything, pretty much. Uh, yes, he did. Candy, uh, vegetables. Uh, he had it. You didn't have to go to the store and get your necessities. He had it right there on that truck. What's his first name? Uh, mm -hmm. Reverend Howard. His name yeah, was Laverd Le Howard. Laverd. Okay. Laverd Howard. And then, uh, uh, oh, Deanna's father, father uh, Mr. Bird, uh, Mr. Yeah. Uh, Durbin, Durbin, Durbin. I think his name was James. James, James Durbin. He had a fruit truck too. Produce truck. Produce. Okay. Mm -hmm. Remember, I was talking about a, um, Smitty's had a club. Oh, yes, he oh, yeah. did. Smitty's okay. Club. Yeah. Okay. The People's Place. The people. <laughs> it was the People's Place. Okay. That's what it was. Smitty, yeah, yeah. The People's yeah. Place. Yeah. Okay. You see, that party, parties happened down there, too. Okay. Oh, oh, Charles Bullock, for a short time, had a pool hall at the other end. They used to shoot pool at the other end of that building. Okay. Yeah. Oh. And who had said um, Miss Ola May would be cooking at a cafe? Uh, I wanted to talk about Smitty's Cafe. It was in Smitty's, yes. So we had a club and a cafe? Yes. yes. Okay. Okay. You remember any businesses, Gloria? Just at the Hayden store. Okay. And the barbershop and the beauty shop mm -hmm. and, the and the cafe there. Oh, okay. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, Jesse Polk Sr., Presently has the concrete construction company. He retired from that. 
-hmm. And, I'm well, I think he retired. <laughs> But he's yeah. still, he's still very over, active he's with his still sons. still overseeing yes. uh, Jesse Perkins' son. Smitty's Smitty trucking. And, and Smitty's okay. trucking. Okay. Yeah. I had him. Okay. And Kevin Douglas. I'm, okay. I'm kind of going back, though. Okay. Well, this is more than I had. <laughs> this is good. Um, well, okay. Five minutes. Uh, and then what advice would you give the younger generation? Stay in school. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I would and say learn to uh, obey the your take elders. Uh, Do we have to use the mic because he wanted to get. Oh, you had your mic. Yeah, okay, go on. go on. Say it again then. Stay in school and learn to obey your elders. Have respect for your elderly people. Mm -hmm. Okay. And respect for yourself. Because number one, you have to have respect for yourself first, mm -hmm. then you could have respect for others. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I would say uh, take advantage of all of the resources in Marin City. Mm -hmm. There's tons of resources that are free, that they offer, all kind of opportunities, and the young kids just have to take advantage of it. And some just don't want to come from the other side of the hill over, but they have to take advantage of, of the opportunities that the CDC, Community Development Corporation, offer and the Marin City Community Services District. So take advantage of community resources. Benny? Oh, I would say <clears throat> that they should um, learn how to vocally communicate more because these kids are um, grown up in the technological era. And as I look at my grandkids, their heads are always down on a phone or computer or something like that, but they need to learn how to vocally communicate with people because regardless to whether you have a computer or not, you have to be able to communicate in order to make it in this world. And learn to, learn to be more mannerable. A lot of kids were not, are, are not mannerable like when I was growing up. You could. We had to, I still call Miss Avery Miss Avery, and I'm 72 years old, mm -hmm. and I can't call her by her <laughs> first name. It just doesn't seem right, you know. So there's a lot of things that this generation needs to learn. I would, um, I, I would have them to hear, uh, well, to pass on what my mother passed on to me. Um, she said that the gift of life is God's gift to you. And what you do with your life will be your gift in return. She said, you live your life so that you put a smile on the face of the creator of yourself. And I would just have them to just linger with that for a time because there's so much inside of us that we haven't found because we're so busy being distracted, really, in many ways, about things that's outside of us. There's a good thing outside of us to learn, like it's been said before. People have to you go to school, for sure. But you are, there's a school inside you that's waiting for you to come in and find out those things about yourself. Mm -hmm. I like to say, my father, when we were growing up, my, it, was, it was six of us, and he worked hard. Uh, he came out working for the shipyard also for a short time, and then he started to stay because he had six of us. My mom did domestic. And they had to clothe and, you know, and feed all of us. And my father used to get so angry when we ate up all the food from him when by the time he got home from work. And he would always say, look, I work hard for my money. I work hard. Y'all could save me something. He said, nobody's going to give you a dime. You got to work, get it, and money do not grow on trees. <laughs> what are you telling me? <laughs> uh, oh, that's all right. Uh, the advice that I would give uh, to the young people would be keep in mind your part spirit and flesh. Don't concentrate, don't let the flesh always overrule the spirit. Remember there's a spirit inside of you. And that will help guide you to do the right things in life. So I, that's one thing I would tell them. And then the other thing would be, you know, it's nice to be nice. Be respectful, because whatever you put out there, it's going to come back to you. It will. I mean, you, 
it's going to come back to you. And uh, we, we, we just need to spend some time with the elders. Yeah. Sit at the feet of the elders so you can learn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, the oldies, yeah, the oldies, don't throw it all. Don't throw the baby out with the bath water. <laughs> okay, uh, yeah. I believe in education, yeah, but like you say, that's, you, you got to get that other stuff together before you're going to learn. Okay. Um, I would like to just okay. share yeah, with we you. Got, they want them to finish. Oh, yeah. okay. It's only three left. Three things. Home, church, and community. I've heard all of you say. We don't have children living in homes today. We have them living in houses. There's a difference between a home and a house. Today I was blessed with a new baby. That's when life begins. And thank you, Felicia, for your efforts with the performing stars, dealing with our youth. We cannot get our youth to do what we are not teaching. I love the work that you say, word you use with respect. You have to have it and demand it in order to get it. If each one of you as grandparents continue to do as you're doing right now with as a citizen group, it takes one, one and one, three steps. The home, the church. Mm -hmm. We started this with the prayer and the community. As a non-birth parent and have chosen 82 years or 81 years, there's a problem with my birth certificate. <laughs> <laughs> I want to thank you and each one of you who have brought back my Louisiana heritage to say the reason why they left Texas, the reason why they left Mississippi, the reason why they left, left Louisiana and all of the other you don't leave it, you bring it with you. And mm. I thank you for that. And I thank you for that question. Mm. What do we teach the next generation? What advice? Well, it's hard to top already what's been said. I would really be repeating. But what my cousin just said, home, family, community is extremely important in a child's life. And if they get all the nurturing, all the love, all that they, they can't help but grow and prosper. And I also thank Felicia for what she's doing in terms of the community and, and letting kids, even the garden, you know, these kids are learning how to garden, which, you know, that's almost unheard of. But all those kinds of things are what children need today that helps them to develop into adulthood. Uh, so piggybacking on everything else, the education, the spiritual part, that's all important. I, I grew up in that era where you train up a child in the way he should go, so when he get old, he won't not depart. That's yeah. what they need today. And that's what I advise of the young people to stay close to the elderly so that they can learn what they need to learn to be, develop into a young adult. And I think Ms. Abair and Ms. Hardy, did you? You know, okay. Well, I would really say ditto to what all the things that have been said. And uh, number one, tell the youth to respect their parents first, because some of these kids don't even respect their parents. So let's start in the home respecting each other in the home and then outside. And then second, tell the boys to pull up their pants. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, that's a good one. That's a good note. Well, this is just wonderful. I can just see this happening on a regular basis. Pull up the pants and tell the girls all right. Okay. Oh, you, okay. Um, uh, I have a thank you card. 
to Felicia Gaston, uh -huh. Executive Director of Performing Stars of Marin, Board of Directors, and staff on behalf of the Marin City Senior Sunshine Club members. We would like to thank you for your magnificent work and all that you do in doing for the preservation of the history of Marin City. May God continue to give you the wisdom and the vision to reach for the stars. Oh, Senior thank Sunshine. you. Thank you. I really should have called Performing Star Big Mama's program. <laughs> I'm doing all the things she taught me. So, Okay, so we're going to close out with this beautiful song by with Carl and his beautiful voice. I was born by the river in a little tent. Oh, and just like the river, I've been running ever since. It's been a long, a long time coming, but I know change gonna come. No, oh, yes, it will. It's been too hard living, but I'm afraid to die. Cause I don't know what's up there beyond the sky. It's been a long, a long time coming, but I know change gonna come. And oh, yes, it will. I go to the movies. And I go downtown. Somebody keep telling me, boy, don't be messing around. It's been a long, a long time coming. But I know change gonna come. And oh, yes, it will. Then I go to my brother and I say, brother, help me please. But he winds up knocking me back down on my knees. Lord, there have been times that I thought I couldn't last for long. Now I know I'm able to carry on. It's been a long, a long time coming, but I know change gonna come. And oh, yes, it will. Thank you. Thank you. That's a way to beautiful ending. In Marin City, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, I woke up this morning with my mind. On Marin City, yes, I woke up this morning with my mind. On Marin City, I woke up this morning with my mind.